Imagine if you could describe a photograph with infinite resolution that no matter how far you zoomed in, you just resolved more and more and more detail. You never reach that sort of pixely limitation point where the information just runs out. Best selfie ever. What you have described is a fractal. This is one of the most famous ones, the Mandelbrot set. What's even more interesting is that as you zoom into these images, the structures that you see from a distance begin to recreate themselves in the finer details, infinitely blossoming into more and more complicated structures. And all this information, this infinite information, is contained in this one small equation, a complex quadratic polynomial. This isn't just an exercise in mathematics, this occurs out there, in nature. Ew, nature. This architecture appears in the branching of veins in the human body, in the shells of snails, and the leaves of plants, and in the formation of snowflakes. Do you want a bit of fractal? But how do you get from this equation to this image? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. Because often fractals are thrown around for people to oogle at without really going into any of the detail about how they're made, which actually is the interesting part. So it's going to be a bit of a mathy one, but have no fear, take out your robe and wizard's hat, and prepare to be a math magician. Let's start with the equation again. Now this is a formula that works by iteration, which is a process of using the result from the last step as part of the current step effectively building on what past processes did. Hence why computers and nature are so good at it, because it effectively builds on the structures of the past. Now here I make a caveat in that we will be using complex numbers, which despite the name are actually relatively easy. They are numbers with a real and an imaginary component, which yes, does technically mean they are a two-dimensional number. Today we won't go into what an imaginary number actually is, I'll leave that to your imagination. We'll just treat real and imaginary numbers as if they were the x and the y axis of an xy plot. I really feel like using x's and o's as a coordinate system in mathematics was an opportunity that was missed. Focus! Okay, so we start with a chart, an equation, and a rule that says if the square of the number in any of these boxes is, say, bigger than 2, it's no longer part of the Mandelbrot set. And so we say it has escaped the Mandelbrot set. Which sort of fills my mind with some weird dystopian future in which complex numbers are desperately trying to escape some Mandelbrot overlord. But at least if they don't escape, they make something which looks like a bug. Which is nice. We must escape the Mandelbrot. Next, we number all of our boxes with their coordinate. And this coordinate becomes the number C for each of the boxes. And finally, we set our initial conditions. So we set Z of each box equal to zero. Now what we do is follow the equation. We take Z from our box, we square it, we add the coordinate, and we check is the magnitude bigger than two. If it is bigger, we'll color it blue to say that it's escaped the Mandelbrot set. If it's not bigger, we'll color it red. But remember, this is working by a process of iteration, so we have to do this a few times for each box. The more times we do it, the clearer our picture becomes, as more and more boxes escape the Mandelbrot set. Now that is the basic idea, and that's all there is to it. So now what we're going to do is turn to some code, which can do it faster and also with more boxes. Here, for example, each pixel is a box. We also have the advantage of being able to better color code our boxes. Here we set a low number of tries to escape the Mandelbrot set to the blue end of the spectrum, and boxes that still haven't escaped the Mandelbrot set, we set to the red end of the spectrum. Also, I've included the code I'm using in the comments section. You'll need Python 2.7 to run it. Now this isn't my code, I got it from here, but what I have done is added comments to it, so that even if you don't understand how code works, you can still get the gist. Okay, so after five attempts, we seem pretty far away from our end goal of something that looks like this. But it's only a question of time. A few more iterations and more and more points will escape the Mandelbrot set. Even more, and we start to resolve the image that we were expecting. What we just watched reminds me a little bit of the prenatal evolution of this little squishy creature. I think they call it the human being. Now, the more iterations we do, the finer detail that we're able to resolve. Increasing the number of boxes we look at takes us further and further into this behavior. A behavior that arises due to the infinite nature of numbers. Because what we're actually doing is drawing the boundary between two sets of numbers. One that escapes the Mandelbrot set and one that doesn't. Increasing the density of the number of boxes that we're looking at takes us closer and closer into this boundary. And if we were to pick two numbers, one either side of the boundary, there will be an infinite number of numbers between these two points. This is what allows us to resolve an infinite amount of detail in this self-similar system. To infinity, not necessarily beyond. The Mandelbrot set just showed us that there are an infinite number of numbers between any two numbers, and then it drew a picture of it to show us that it was true. What a guy. This injection of a simple rule into a system causes infinite complexity. Pretty sweet when you think about it. 
Now what we eventually happen across is a taste of the reason so many physicists and mathematicians love this sort of thing. This deep sense of complexity arising from something that at the end of the day can be written down in short form or something very great coming from something very little. This is the type of thing that captivates people to pursue these sort of problems. This great depth and complexity that at the end of the day when you perfectly understand it can be simplified and made beautiful. Think also that these patterns periodically permeate nature, expressing themselves in our seemingly muddled, complicated existence, and you get some aesthetic understanding of that inherent beauty of simplicity. I'll see you next time. Bye. If you like this sort of thing, do hit the subscribe button and I'll make a few more. Um, I try and put them out each weekend, depending on how the old PhD is going. If you click here, it will take you to a video I made last week on the nature of randomness. Thanks for watching. Escape the Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot, no!